Let the fantasy news flow! Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another episode of Fantasy News. I'm back in the jacket, back in the chair. Let's go ahead and talk about what's happening for the genre today. And we're gonna go ahead and kick it off with, you know him, you love him. Rob J. Hayes is once again putting together a list He's checking it twice, and he's letting you know what indie authors are having releases for January. So, once again, if you want to kind of pick up the more indie side of things, that was the worst thing I've ever done. If you want to check out some self-published releases for fantasy this month, go ahead and check them out in the links down below. And I have a new goal for this year I'm actually assigning to myself and thinking of right in this moment. I'm going to be reading at least one self-published indie fantasy book a month until the year is done. That means at least 12. Hold me to that. If I don't do that, kill me. And Rob, I have a message for you specifically. I know you watch. I know, you, I know you're here. I know you're listening. You want to open a bar together? All right. And we're actually going to jump into a quick piece of quickie news. The voting has closed for the 2020 Stabby Awards over at the r slash fantasy subreddit. I just want to address this because a lot of people are asking me to cover it sooner, but I didn't want to cover it here and then end up swaying the vote in my favor by accidentally bombarding it with my fans. I feel like that's really not fair. So yes, it happened. I look forward to seeing the winners of the Stabby Awards announced but I'm not going to cover it before it's like voting closed because I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> and unfortunately, we do have some bad news for the fantasy genre coming out already. Well, specifically the sci-fi side of things, but still. Martha Wells took to Twitter with some complaints about her book listings on Amazon. Here's what she had to say. So this year is starting off great. Yes, that's sarcasm. My first novel, The Element of Fire, was published in 1993 by Tor Books, long before eBooks. When it was out of print, I finally was able to self-publish an eBook edition in 2000 2006, when I really needed the income. Since then, I've had to deal with a lot of pirated editions on Amazon Kindle, Nook, Kobo, etc. On 9-22-2020, I reported two more pirated copies on Kindle, and they gave me a report claim number, and then ignored me, as they still make money off pirates. Then yesterday, I got a quality issue complaint on it and had to drop everything to deal with that. The reader reported archaic words as typos, along with a few OCR errors. I got it fixed, and now Amazon is saying they have an infringement claim filed against me on the book. The two pirated copies are still available, but they're going to take my ebook down. I don't know if that also applies to the audiobook edition, which is by Tantor Audiobooks. This is very common on Amazon. I don't know how self-published authors cope with all the theft and harassment, frankly. The theft and harassment aimed at traditionally published authors is bad enough with a publisher supporting you. I've self-published four of my out-of-print books from the 90s and early 2000s, plus a story collection, when I needed the money, and there were years when they allowed me to keep paying my share of the household bills and not be totally dead weight. Anyway, I doubt I can get anything done about it, especially on a holiday. I've never had Amazon actually respond to me on any any pirated book reports, despite jumping through all their hoops and getting claim numbers. Okay, 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 all right. Amazon has had a clear systemic issue going on where they end up devaluing authors in various ways. We have covered a few different instances like this on Amazon happening to authors of all kinds of sizes. And right now, I just want to see some kind of effort, because I get it. I get Amazon is a huge corporation and dealing with all the small stuff like this is borderline impossible. But I just want some effort because I'm terrified of this. I'm about to self-publish. I'm gonna watch this like a hawk when my book is up to make sure it's not pirated. And I'm afraid it will be. I highly recommend Martha Wells material. I binged all of Murderbot and just loved the crap out of it. So if you have not already, go ahead and check her out. I'll actually have some of Murderbot linked in the description down below. And uh, I hope the situation gets better for. All I can do is raise awareness at this point, so next news. Fonda Lee has also welcomed us into the new year and posted a countdown on her website for the release of the third Greenbone Saga book, Jade Legacy. Probably my most anticipated release of this year that is confirmed. And now in combating fantasy rumors I just don't think are true news, we've seen several reports that 
Elder Scrolls in the works over at Netflix? But even the articles that are reporting this are saying, take it with a grain of salt, probably not true, but they put the most clickbaity headlines up possible. And I tracked this down the best I could, and it just seems to have come out of some websites that have inside sources that occasionally have kind of been reliable. I don't believe this at all. You can if you want to. Hey, if you want to believe that Netflix is working on an Elder Scrolls show, fantastic. I look at it from a creative perspective and go, what story is there from Elder Scrolls that people will be like dying to see in a show? People don't play Elder Scrolls or Skyrim specifically for the story, really. It's the gameplay. So I don't even think this would happen. I don't think it's really happening. And I just wanted to say, if you're one of these people who saw the headline and got excited and didn't read further, I think this is a bunch of malarkey. Yeah, literally this article I'm looking at, now I have like four different ones talking about pulled up. This one is going like, we don't know where it came from. <laughs> so. Just a rumor bouncing around the internet. Before we get into the rest of the news though, quickly a word from today's sponsor and a shot of my butt. Now picture this, a man sitting alone in his apartment, wondering how will I ever organize the fantasy world I want to write? He's been at it for years, unable to keep his notes about the details and the finer points in order. He seems hopeless, lost, completely stuck. Today, you don't have to deal with that problem anymore because Campfire Blaze is at the tip of your fingers. This writing aid is one of the ultimate ways for you to take that story that's been stuck in your head and get it out there. Whether it's the timeline, character arcs, magic systems, items, languages, what other features do you not already have? I feel like it's a very compromising position. Campfire is the tool you want to use to help blow that creative process out of your skull holes. And I will maintain the amazing part of this is not only could it be a subscription service, if you prefer that way, or a one-time purchase, but you can also break down and modularize all of Campfire and just pay for the parts you want to use. Yeah, I back this product. They have mastered the art of turning their product into a community of people helping each other out. Jump in their Discord server. Why not? So if this sounds interesting to you, go ahead and check out Campfire Blaze in the description down below and bring out your creative ideas in the most clear, clear way possible. I don't, I didn't have, a, I, didn't, I don't script these. I just kind of go. Back to the video. Are you a Witcher fan? Did you like the show? Are you excited for season two? I'm just gonna get this out of the way. Netflix posted a shot of a season two script, so if you wanna see a little sneak peek of what Geralt of Rivia, Yennefer, and Ciri will be getting up to with the next season of Witcher, go ahead and check that out in the links down below, or just look what's on the screen, cause that's it, that's the thing, that's the story, that's, that's it, we're done, next news. You all know I'm like the biggest anime fan ever, right? Like, I've watched them all. Uh, <laughs> some people, haven't seen my reviews of animes I've watched and they think that's real. Well, One Piece is trending across the board with its 1,000th chapter to be released. I thought this was just kind of like a, oh, 1,000th chapter thing, that's neat. But apparently this has triggered a massive surge of people re-watching the show, starting again, getting into it the first time. That's fantastic for the franchise. And honestly, the 1,000th chapter is that's just damn impressive. I don't know mangas, mangas, mungas, mungas very well. Have many of them reached a thousand chapters before? I doubt it because good lord. This franchise I've heard of since I was in early high school, I think. It's been around for a long time, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I try my hardest with anime, guys. But speaking of anime, and some people get angry, I just called it that, there's going to be an Avatar The Last Airbender cast reunion on January 9th. So mark your calendars and be sure to tune on in. That's a lot of fun, cool thing for the fans. And I wonder if we're going to get some news about the show over at Netflix? Maybe? I don't know. But do you like being tantalized, teased, instigated? Well, what's teasing you, Daniel? Oh, I don't know. I just saw these screen caps for the upcoming Uncharted movie, and I'm still not sure how I feel about it. Yeah, it's starring Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, but is that going to capture Nathan Drake, the man that I played in one video game? But it was a pretty good game, so I'm kind of invested in this. That's the story. They, they release screen caps. That's... I just wanted to deliver it weird. But winding down fantasy news today, I want to talk about the fact that I know at least a few of you back in 2017 made a certain pre-order of a game that was highly anticipated by Nintendo, Metroid Prime 4. It's been hyped for, it's been one of the most anticipated games since Metroid Prime 3. And I'm excited to say that your pre-order might finally come through. 
in 2023, which is the date that was just listed on Amazon as a potential release. This is not confirmed. A lot of times these are just placeholders, but it's kind of shocking to see it put so far off. Usually these placeholders are like a year off tops. So, hey, if you made the pre-order in 2017, you could possibly have it in your hands six years later. But that has been the latest episode of Fantasy News. It was a bit of a light news week as it's the holiday season. Not everyone's doing these major drops. But tomorrow, be sure to tune in for the Fantasy Awards. I'm very, very excited to get those to you and I've been busting my little butt to make them as high quality as possible. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you like to support what I do here. I love y'all. Peace. And, of course, I'd like to record a special shout-out to my latest high-tier Patreons, Maggie and Cody Simpson. Have a good one, y'all.